The fabric of space itself was tearing apart before their eyes. Through the rents in reality, Benny could see. Things, shapes that hurt to look at, geometries that shouldn't exist, and more hive ships. So many more. Multiple dimensional breaches detected the Thunderchild's AI announced with unsettling calm. Count exceeds safe observation parameters. Safe observation parameters be damned Captain Cook's voice cut through the chaos. Engineering status. Benny tore his eyes away from the viewport, focusing on his gauges. The Thunderchild's boilers were screaming, pushing far beyond their design limits. The superheated coal smoke pouring from their stacks was creating strange patterns in space patterns that seemed to interact with the reality tiers in unexpected ways. Sir, he reported, we're at 130% and climbing. She won't take much more of this. Look, T. Lara's frills were extended in shock as she pointed through the viewport. Where their superheated smoke met the reality tiers, something strange was happening. The breaches were wavering. Bridge, engineering Benny called out. Are you seeing this? The smoke, it's affecting the tiers. Through the command channel, they could hear the Yorkshire's Captain Thunderchild. We're seeing the same thing. Our smoke's making them unstable. Another blast rocked the ship as more bio ships poured through the tiers. The hive ships were now fully emerged, their massive forms blotting out the stars. But where the coal smoke touched them, their biomechanical surfaces seemed to recoil. Sergeant Martinez called from his station. The temperature readings in the smoke clouds, they're off the charts. Something about the physics out here, it's changing how the smoke behaves. Benny watched as another reality tear began to form, but as it intersected with their smoke trail, it sputtered and failed to fully manifest. His engineer's mind raced with the implications. T. Lara, he turned to the Centaurian engineer. Your people's scientists, didn't they say our smoke patterns defied normal physics? Her scales shifted to revelation gold. Yes, the chaotic thermal patterns, the way they interact with space-time. By the first sun's Benny, are you thinking? Bridge Benny cut in. Captain, I think we've got something. Request emergency communication with all coal-powered ships. Granted, Cook responded instantly. What are you seeing, Sergeant? Through the viewport, Benny watched as another tier failed to fully open where the Yorkshire smoke trail intersected it. Below them, Centauri Prime's crystalline cities still gleamed, untouched by the battle raging above, if he was right about what they were seeing. Sir, he said, his voice firm with conviction, I think we just found out why God intended ships to be coal-powered. The Thunderchild's boilers roared their defiance as more hive ships emerged, but now, for the first time since the battle began, they had hope. In the clouds of black smoke that had so long been mocked as primitive and obsolete, they'd found their weapon. They just had to figure out how to use it. There's a pattern Benny's hands flew over his control panel as he analyzed the smoke formations. T. Lara, look at these heat signatures. The Centaurian engineer's frills rippled with excitement as she studied the data. Where the superheated coal smoke intersected with the reality tiers, complex mathematical patterns were forming in the fabric of space itself. The thermal dynamics, she said, her scales shifting to analysis blue, they're creating quantum-level disruptions, the same reason our sensors could never properly track your ships. Is the same reason they can't maintain their tiers in our smoke, Benny finished. Bridge, we need to coordinate with Yorkshire and the other coal ships. We're not just making smoke screens anymore, we're making reality barriers. Explain quickly, Sergeant Captain Cook ordered as another blast rocked the ship. Through the viewport, they could see more bio ships emerging from the tiers that weren't blocked by smoke. Sir, the physics of space out here is affecting how our smoke behaves. The superheated particles are creating. T. Lara, what would you call it? Quantum thermal barriers, she replied, her frills dancing with scientific excitement, even as her battle armor shifted to combat mode. The coal smoke particles, when heated beyond normal parameters, are generating localized space-time disruptions. In English, Sergeant Cook demanded as another impact shuddered through the ship. Sir, our smoke can seal their holes in reality. We just need to get hot enough and create the right patterns. There was a brief pause on the comm. 
Yorkshire actual here, the other captain cut in. Our sensors are confirming Thunderchild's readings. The smoke isn't just blocking their vision, it's blocking their ability to tear through space. Bridge to engineering Cook's voice was steel. What do you need? Benny shared a look with T. Lara, who nodded. Sir, request permission to take manual control of all smoke venting systems and get me a direct line to every coal ship in the fleet. We need to coordinate our smoke patterns. Granted, Yorkshire, all coal ships converge on Thunderchild's position. Engineering has tactical control of smoke operations. Martinez called out from his station boiler 4 is showing critical pressure levels. Vented through the auxiliary stacks Benny ordered. T. Lara, calculate optimal thermal distribution for maximum quantum disruption. Through the viewport, they could see the Yorkshire and other coal-powered ships moving into formation. The Centaurian vessels, still running on their coal-powered backup systems, took up defensive positions around them. Engineering to all coal ships Benny called out, his hands dancing over the controls. Match these exact smoke patterns. We're going to turn our primitive technology into a weapon they never saw coming. The massive hive ships were still trying to spawn more bio ships, but where the coordinated smoke patterns touched their reality tiers, the breaches began to fail. The enemy vessels recoiled, their biological components clearly disturbed by the quantum thermal chaos the coal smoke was creating. It's working T. Lara's frills were a blur of motion as she read her sensors. The tears are destabilizing. Benny, look. Through the swirling smoke and chaos of battle, Benny could see their theory proving true. The coal smoke, superheated by their overtaxed engines and affected by the strange physics of deep space, was actually sealing the wounds in reality. Now they just had to maintain it long enough to save T. Lara's homeworld. All engineering crews, he called out, his voice firm with determination, push those boilers to the limit. Today we show the galaxy why humans never gave up their coal. The Thunder Child's engines roared as they prepared for their next move, black smoke trailing behind them like a banner of defiance against the impossible odds they faced. Form up on Thunder Child, Captain Cook's voice rang through the fleet comms. Diamond formation, maximum smoke output. The coal-powered ships moved with precision that would have made ancient naval commanders proud. Yorkshire took port position, her stacks belching superheated smoke in perfect synchronization with Thunderchild's patterns. The other coal ship's warrior, Devastation, and Thunderer filled in the formation, their combined smoke trails creating a complex geometric pattern in space. Engineering to bridge Benny called out as he monitored the thermal readings. Smoke temperature at 30,000 degrees and climbing. The space-time disruption is holding. Through the viewport, he could see the effects of their coordinated action. The reality tiers were sealing shut where their smoke patterns touched them, the quantum thermal barrier creating a wall that even the hive ships couldn't breach. The largest hive ship is showing signs of distress, T. Lara reported, her scales rippling with excitement. Its biological components are reacting negatively to the quantum disruption. The Centaurian vessels, still running on their coal-powered backup systems, had formed a defensive ring around the coal ships. Their crystalline weapons might have been powered by steam, but they still packed a punch. Eternal light to Thunderchild, the Centaurian flagship's commander called. Our weapons are yours to command. Tell us where to hit them. Their Benny pointed to a spot where the smoke patterns had revealed a weakness in the hive ship's biomechanical armor. That junction point the smoke's making it visible. The Eternal Light's crystal-focused weapons opened up, their beams somehow amplified by passing through the coal smoke. They struck the hive ship at exactly the point Benny had identified. The massive entity shuddered, its tendrils writhing in what had to be pain. It's working, Martinez shouted from his station. Their biological systems can't handle the quantum chaos our smoke's creating. All coal ships maintain formation, Cook ordered. Engineering. Give me everything those boilers have got. Benny's hands flew over his controls, pushing the Thunder Child's engines beyond anything they were designed for. The deck plates were vibrating at a frequency that made his teeth ache, but he couldn't stop now. T. Lara, he called out. Redirect emergency power to the smoke condensers. We need to increase particle density. The Centaurian engineer's frills were a blur as she worked her console. Density increasing. 
The quantum thermal barrier is strengthening. Through the swirling smoke and chaos of battle, Benny could see their strategy working. The hive ship's attempts to spawn new bioships were failing as the reality tears sealed shut. Its massive form was actually recoiling from the coal smoke, like a living thing touching a hot stove. Look, Martinez pointed through the viewport. The other hive ships they're trying to retreat. Oh no, you don't, Benny muttered, adjusting the smoke patterns. You don't get to run after what you tried to do here. Yorkshire, warrior, cross your smoke trails with ours. The coordination between the coal ships was perfect centuries of naval tradition combined with space-age warfare. Their smoke trails intertwined, creating a web of quantum disruption that trapped the hive ships in place. Bridge to engineering Cook's voice carried a note of fierce pride. Whatever you're doing down there, Sergeant, keep doing it. We've got them on the ropes. The Thunder Child's boilers screamed as they pushed them harder, the superheated smoke creating patterns in space that defied physics itself. Around them, the combined human Centaurian fleet pressed their advantage, pouring fire into the weaknesses revealed by their smoke. For the first time since the battle began, victory seemed possible. They just had to hold together a little longer. For Earth and Centauri Prime Benny shouted as he pushed his engines past their breaking point, the coal smoke rising like humanity's defiance against the darkness of space. All ships, execute maneuver coal 7 Captain Cook's order rang through the fleet. Engineering, initiate smoke vortex. Benny's hands were steady on the controls, despite the Thunder Child's violent shuddering. All engineering crews synchronize smoke output on my mark. Around them, the other coal ships moved into a new formation, a complex spiral pattern that T. Lara had calculated would maximize their quantum thermal disruption. Through the viewport, the massive hive ships writhed as more of their reality tears sealed shut. Yorkshire, in position. Warrior ready. Devastation, standing by. Thunderer, awaiting your signal. Now Benny ordered, throwing the main smoke control lever to maximum. Full burn, all ships. The combined output of five coal-powered ships, their engines pushed far beyond safety limits, created something unprecedented in space. The superheated smoke began to spiral, caught in the gravitational forces of their coordinated movement. As the ships continued their precise dance, the smoke formed a massive vortex. By the first sun's Tilara whispered, her scales shifting through colors of awe. The quantum readings. They're off the scale. The vortex grew, its black depths seeming to swallow light itself. Where it touched the bio ships, their living components recoiled in obvious agony. The hive ship's attempts to create new tiers in space were instantly nullified by the quantum chaos of the smoke. Martinez Benny called out, reroute emergency power to the main boilers. T. Lara, calculate maximum safe rotation speed for the vortex. Safe T. Lara's frills danced with something between amusement and terror. We exceeded safe about 20 impossible things ago. Through the command channel, they could hear the eternal lights commander the enemy vessels their biological components are beginning to break down. Whatever your smoke is doing, it's killing them. Benny watched through the viewport as the truth of those words became visible. The bioships caught in their smoke vortex were literally coming apart their impossible geometries failing as the quantum thermal disruption tore at their very substance. Sir Martinez called out. The main hive ship look. The massive entity was trying to retreat, its tendrils flailing as it attempted to tear open space again. But everywhere it tried, the coal smoke was there, sealing the breaches before they could fully form. All ships cook ordered, push forward. Don't let them escape. The Thunder Child's boilers were screaming now, Pressure gauges all in the red, but Benny could see victory within their grasp. The smoke vortex had become a weapon unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen primitive technology turned into their salvation. T. Lara, he said, not taking his eyes off his controls, remember how your people used to mock our coal smoke. Her frills rippled with amusement even as her hands danced across her console, helping maintain the vortex. I believe I owe humanity several thousand apologies. The vortex grew larger, its quantum effects visible now even to the naked eye as space itself seemed to twist around it. The bio ships were failing, 
their hybrid nature proving to be their undoing against the chaos of superheated coal smoke. Engineering to bridge Benny called out, allowing himself a small smile. Recommend all ships prepare for final push. Let's show these bastards what coal-powered really means. The Thunder Child led the charge, her smoke joining with her sister ships to form a weapon that would be remembered in legend the day human stubbornness and primitive technology saved an alien world. Full steam ahead, Captain Cook's voice carried the weight of centuries of naval tradition. All coal ships, maximum thrust. Engineering, give me everything. The Thunder Child's engines were beyond screaming now they were howling, a sound of pure human defiance against the impossible. Benny's hands flew over his controls, bypassing every safety system, pushing the boilers to limits that would have made their designers faint. Benny Tilara called out, her frills rigid with alarm. Primary boiler temperature exceeding 200% of maximum rated capacity. Let her run hot, he called back, eyes fixed on his gauges. Martinez, dump emergency coal reserves into all feeds, every lump we've got. The combined coal fleet moved as one, their smoke vortex now a massive spiral of quantum chaos that wrapped around the remaining hive ships like the coils of a serpent. Where their superheated smoke touched the bio ship's living components, they simply came apart. By God, someone whispered over the fleet comm. They're actually dissolving. Through the viewport, Benny watched as the largest hive ship made one final, desperate attempt to tear open reality. But the coal smoke was everywhere now, its quantum thermal properties sealing every breach before it could fully form. All Centaurian vessels Cook ordered, concentrate fire on the exposed weak points. Thunderchild will maintain smoke coverage. The crystalline ships, their weapons still powered by coal-fired backup systems, opened up with everything they had. Their beams passing through the smoke vortex seemed to gain power, striking the hive ships with devastating effect. Sir Martinez called out, main boiler pressure reaching critical. She can't take much more. Benny looked at his readings. They were far beyond anything the Thunder Child was ever designed to handle. But through the viewport, he could see the enemy breaking. Just a little more. T. Lara, he shouted. Reroute all non-essential power to the smoke condensers. Every last bit. Her scales shifted to determination red as she worked her console. Rerouting power. Life support running on backups. Artificial gravity failing on decks three through seven. The deck plates were vibrating so hard that loose tools were floating despite the failing gravity. The air in engineering was almost too hot to breathe. But through it all, the Thunder Child's coal-fired heart kept beating. Yorkshire reports boiler breached the ship's AI announced. Warrior and devastation showing critical pressure levels. Hold together, Benny whispered, both to his ship and the fleet. Just hold together a little longer. And then he saw at the moment they'd been fighting for. The largest hive ship, caught in their smoke vortex, began to break apart. Its biomechanical components, unable to cope with the quantum chaos of the coal smoke, started to tear themselves to pieces. Now Cook's voice rang through the fleet. All ships, full power. End this. The combined coal fleet surged forward, their smoke trails creating a final, massive surge in the vortex. The effect was devastating. The remaining hive ships, already weakened, simply came apart. Enemy signatures dropping rapidly, the AI reported with its usual calm. Quantum tier events decreasing. Biological components showing total systemic failure. Through the chaos and smoke, through the screaming of overtaxed engines and the thunder of combat, Benny watched as their impossible victory unfolded. The bio ships were either retreating through what few tiers they could still create or breaking apart in the quantum storm of coal smoke. Bridge to engineering Cook's voice was thick with pride. Well done, Sergeant. Well done, everyone. Secure from general quarters. Take us home. Benny looked at his team, human and centurion alike, all covered in coal dust and sweat, all wearing expressions of exhausted triumph. Above them, Centauri Prime still shone, its crystalline cities untouched by the enemy that had meant to consume them. They'd done it. With coal power, human stubbornness, and a little help from the laws of physics themselves, they'd actually done it. Tilara, he said softly, 
watching the last hive ship disintegrate in their smoke, still think coal power is primitive. Her frills danced with laughter, even as her scales showed exhausted relief. Primitive? No. Divine intervention? Perhaps. After all, coal-powered is how God intended. The last wisps of their quantum thermal smoke vortex were finally dissipating, revealing the breathtaking view of Centauri Prime below. Through the Thunder Child's engine room viewport, Benny could see the crystalline city still gleaming, untouched by the battle that had raged above them. Damage report complete the ship's AI announced. All boilers showing extreme stress fatigue. Recommended minimum 48 hours of cool down before next firing sequence. Worth it, Martinez muttered from his station, still grinning despite his exhaustion. Every damn lump of coal worth it. T. Lara's scales had settled into a peaceful blue as she worked at her console. Civilian casualty report from the Surface Zero. The combined smokescreen prevented any enemy weapons from reaching the population centers. Her frills rippled with emotion. My family. Everyone, they're all safe. Engineering, Bridge Captain Cook's voice was weary but proud. The Centaurian High Command sends their formal thanks. They're requesting permission to study our, what did they call it, T-Lara? Quantum thermal smoke disruption technology, she replied, her frills showing amusement. Though I tried to explain it's really just coal smoke doing what coal smoke does. Through the viewport, they could see the Yorkshire and other coal ships being swarmed by Centaurian engineering vessels, their crews eager to learn more about the primitive technology that had saved their world. The Eternal Light's crystal hull was still stained black from the battle, but they were wearing those stains like badges of honor. Sir Benny called to the bridge, request permission to begin boiler cool down sequence. Granted, Sergeant. Take good care of her. She earned her rest today. As the engineering team began the delicate process of cooling their overtaxed engines, Benny took a moment to really look at his beloved engine room. The gauge panels were scorched, coal dust covered everything, and several steam pipes would need replacing. But they'd done it. They'd actually done it. You know, Tilara said softly, coming to stand beside him at the viewport, my people have a saying technology advances, but wisdom remains today. We learned that wisdom can sometimes look like a coal-powered steamship. The comm system crackled with a message from the surface thunder child. This is Centauri control. Our orbital ceremonies department requests permission to preserve the remaining coal smoke patterns as a permanent memorial to this battle. Benny laughed. They want to preserve our smoke. Why not T. Lara's scales shifted to joy gold? Let it remind everyone that sometimes the old ways are the best ways she paused, her frills moving in what Benny now recognized as deep respect. That sometimes, salvation comes not from the newest technology, but from the stubborn refusal to give up what works. Through the viewport, they watched as the last of their battle smoke caught the light of the binary stars, creating a beautiful pattern above the crystalline cities. Below, he could see Centaurian ships already beginning to refit themselves with coal-powered systems. The sight of those advanced vessels installing primitive technology brought a smile to his face. Bridge to Engineering Cook called down one last time. Well done, everyone. I think we finally solved that old debate about why we stuck with coal power all these years. Yes, Sir Benny replied, watching as T. Lara's homeworld celebrated its salvation. Exactly as God intended. The Thunder Child's engines ticked as they cooled, their coal-fired heart resting after the greatest victory in human Centaurian history. Above them, the remnants of their smokescreen continued to dance among the stars, a memorial to the day that primitive technology and human stubbornness had saved an alien world. Sometimes, Benny thought, the oldest solutions are the best ones. Sometimes, progress means knowing what not to change. And sometimes, victory smells like coal smoke in space. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope you loved it. Please remember to subscribe if you did like it so you can see more videos like this. And please give us a like and a comment too. I'll see you in the next one.